My name is Samia and I'm part of the Maple product management team. My role here at Maplesoft is to engage with our users and to help them better understand and use our tools, technologies and services. Today, I'd like to talk about how you can develop and deploy interactive applications in Maple. What do I mean by an interactive application? Let me start off by showing you an example. This, for example, is an application that lets you explore how different working fluids and boundary conditions affect the operation of an organic Rankine cycle. These are thermodynamic cycles which are used to recover a, re a usable uh, work from low-grade waste heat, such as that from factories or car exhaust systems. At the top I have my results. At the bottom I have parameters I can change. So I can change fluids, I can change temperatures, and if you look carefully, the results at the top, so the intermediate temperatures, enthalpies and pressures, this heat transfer diagram, and these statistics update. I'll show you a few more applications in a few minutes. Once I've done that, I'll break things down and I'll talk about the range of interactive user interface components available when you build applications in Maple. I'll discuss how they can be laid out and how they can be scripted or programmatically controlled. Finally, I'll talk about the various deployment options available to you. In a short webinar like this, we only really have enough time to touch on the major principles, but that will give you a good sense of the overall philosophy of application development and deployment in Maple. All of the fine-grained details can be found in the Maple documentation and in various tutorials and guides on our website. Let me state what, may, what many of you may already appreciate and find obvious. Real application development is non-linear. You usually start by developing your mathematical model and writing some code. This usually, at least, is done in a traditional Maple worksheet where you see your equations, your parameters, you see plots, numbers and results. Then you might prototype a bit of the user interface and write some UI interaction code. You then play about uh, with your user interface and you test it, just make sure it works. You might make sure that it responds as expected to standard inputs. At this point, you might loop back and tweak your model, develop more of the UI, add some error checking code and so on. This is all a feedback loop. Maple fully supports this type of workflow and that's why the Maple toolchain is so compelling for application development. Let's look at a few more interactive examples, just to place everything into context. I won't look at all of these examples, maybe just one or two. This is a stock valuation application. It calculates if a share price is good value. It's interesting because it communicates with the internet to download company financial information, such as the earnings per share, the current stock price, the price to earnings ratio, and so on. I have a few drop down menus which allow me to check, uh, select the industry. I can pick the stock exchange. And there's uh, a drop down menu which allows me to pick a company. I have a few sliders which allow me to change my required investment parameters such as the desired annual return and my holding period. Based upon a discounted dividend model, this application calculates the theoretical price for the share to be good value. Based upon that information and the actual trading price which is downloaded from the internet, the application tells you if the stock is undervalued or overvalued. Let's show you another application. This is actually an interactive psychometric chart. Psychometric charts give you the properties of humid air, that is dry air with uh, some water vapour uh, uh, in it, as a function of the dry bulb temperature and the humidity ratio. As I move my mouse over the psychometric chart, on the top left hand corner, you see the thermophysical properties of humid air. 
update as I move my mouse. So properties such as the wet bulb temperature, the specific heat capacity, the enthalpy, the viscosity, thermal conductivity, and so on. Now, any of these application, applications can be deployed free of charge to the desktop or the web. As a taster of what I'll show you later, this is the Maple Player. This is a free runtime version of Maple. I'll talk about this in detail later, but this is simply an application which allows me to explore the response of an amplifier. You can also deploy applications free of charge to the web using a service that we call the Maple Cloud. And this is an economic pipe sizer. There are various drop down menus. I can change operating parameters with in these text boxes. And I can also email the results to myself as well. So we have free deployment to the desktop and free, free deployment to the web via the Maple Cloud. So let's talk about application development in a bit more detail. These are the interactive components available to you when you build an interactive application in Maple. We have things like sliders, dials, gauges, widgets, and so on. We also have a plotting component which allows you to display 2D or 3D plots. And there's also uh, something that we call a map container which allows you to type in mathematical equations using real mathematical notation. Any of these can be used when you develop interactive applications in Maple. All of these can be inserted from the components palette here on the left hand side. All I need to do is click at the appropriate point and click the component I want from the components palette here on the left hand side. Now if I right click on any component I can select its properties. This gives me the name of the component. This, for example, is called Slider Zero. I use this name when I programmatically manipulate this slider. I also have other properties here at the bottom. These are properties which control the uh, visual display of the slider, whether it's enabled, disabled, and so on. All of these options can be programmatically manipulated. So, how do we lay out components? We do that with tables. Here, I've enabled the display of a table in a simple interactive application. Inserting tables is easy. If I go to the Insert menu and select Table, I can pick the number of rows and columns I want. I can make these bigger or smaller. I can adjust the alignment, I can change cell colours, and so on. To insert a UI component in any cell, all I need to do is click in the cell and click on the UI components I want from the palette here. For even more fine-grained control over the layout of your application, you can have tables within tables, like so. And that's exactly what I've done here. So, in all of the applications that I've shown you so far, such as this application, the layout is controlled by tables. If I right click on, at this point, I can enable the display of the table borders. And that's how this particular set of components, these, this text and these text boxes were laid out. Of course, once we've laid out com our components, we need to script their action. We need to programmatically control what they do. Uh, so what actually happens when we change the position of a slider or click a button? We do that with the use of the Maple programming language and the action code for that component. Action code is simply Maple code that's executed when you interact with a component, when you click a button or when you move the thumb of a slider.
So look at this simple application here. I have a drop down menu with a list of refrigerants and when I select different uh, fluid, this number here, the 100 year global warming potential updates. We'll look at the code for this application in a minute. Very simply put, in any interactive Maple application, the underlying code has three major sections. First of all, we extract the input parameters from the components in the interface. We then do our calculations. This just involves normal Maple programming techniques, and that's beyond the scope of this webinar. And then we write the results back out to the interface. Two important commands for interacting with the components in the interface are get property and set property from the document tools package. These let you set and retrieve values and properties of components. So let's look at the code for this application. If I right click on this combo box, if I pick this menu item, I see the maple code that's executed every time I interact with this combo box. In the first line, I extract the selected fluid from the drop-down menu. So the name of the combo box is fluid underscore combo, and I'm extracting its value. I then have some maple calculations, which calculate my required quantity. For this specific application, it's very simple. It's simply a one-liner, which uses the new thermophysical data package. I then write the result back out into the interface using set property. Now, you're not just restricted to getting and setting values. There are other properties you can programmatically control for each component. For example, these are the options that you can control for the text area. You can control whether it's editable, you can control its fill colour, you can control whether the borders sh are shown. In this specific example, I've used the set property command to control the font colour for this text box. Let's change that to red. If I hit enter, you can see the colour of this uh, text in this text box changing. For the combo box, I can actually control the list of items in the combo box and that's how I do this. So here I've just pre-filled the combo box with a list of colours, red, orange, yellow and blue, and that appears here. If I want to add extra colours I can just add them to this list. So let's add black and violet. As soon as I hit enter I can see these colours automatically added to this combo box. So let's talk about best practices in coding interactive applications and this is just based on my experience of coding these applications. I generally try to identify commonly used code and I capture that code in functions or procedures. I then place the function definitions in the startup code for the Maple application. Startup code is simply code that's executed once, uh, that's executed when you actually first load a Maple worksheet. And then within the actual action code for the components, I simply have function calls in the component code. Going back to this application, I've actually revised this application to follow these principles. Let's take a look at the new application. So I've just loaded up this application and right at the very start you see an auto-execute warning. Maple warns me that the application is startup code. Uh, it does this purely as a safety measure. The warnings can be disabled if you really don't like them and you don't see this if you deploy the application to the Maple player or the uh, Maple cloud. Now within the action code for this combo box I simply have a call to a function. This function is executed every time I change the selection of this combo box. The actual function definition is in my startup code, this worksheet. 
So here it is. As you can see, all I've done is capture those maple commands that I showed you earlier in a function. The startup code is executed once I load a maple worksheet. So once I've actually loaded up this maple worksheet, this function is available anywhere in that worksheet or via any uh, components. So let's move on to the various deployment options available to you. I've already mentioned the Maple Player. It's actually a free runtime version of Maple and it can be downloaded from this link. The concept is, is that you use your main license of Maple to develop interactive applications. You add in interactivity with the UI components. You can then give that application, the file, to a colleague or a client who can interact with it using the Maple Player. They can change input parameters and view results, but the application can't be changed or modified using the player. You need a full license of Maple to, to do that. I showed you the Maple Player earlier. Let me load up another application. So this is the this is a collection of applications which can be downloaded from our website. It's in the new workbook file format. This allows you to include many different Maple worksheets and other electronic data in a single folder on your hard disk. And this is completely compatible with Maple Player. This application, for example, calculates the saturation temperature of fluids as a function of the pressure. I can pick a different fluid and this plot here gives me, gives me its saturation temperature as a function of the pressure. You can also deploy your applications free of charge to the web using the Maple Cloud. I showed you this earlier. This is the Maple Cloud website. As I mentioned earlier, it's a free service provided by MapleSoft. You can actually upload applications from within Maple to this website. You can create various groups in Maple. You can upload applications to the public cloud so the whole world can see them. Or you can upload your applications to your own private cloud so only you can see them. Or you can create custom groups which are invite only so you control access. And you upload applications via the Maple Cloud Palette here. If you want greater control over the look and feel of your web deployed application, then you might want to look at MapleNet. This is a tool that you install on your own in-house service for deploying Maple applications, and it's the product on which the Maple Cloud is based. This gives you complete control over application deployment over the web. You can create custom login screens, prevent download access, and so on.